In this current of electricity lesson, we'll be looking at the resistance of circuit and factors affecting resistance of a wire. These are our lesson objectives. What is resistance of a circuit? The resistance of a circuit refers to the degree of obstruction to the electrical flow of the circuit. Assuming that the EMF of the battery or the power source does not change, when we close the switch, there's a certain current flow. When the resistance of the light bulb is bigger, the current becomes smaller. As you can see the, from the flow. Likewise, when the resistance of the light bulb becomes smaller, the current becomes bigger as you can see from the flow that is faster now. Using water flowing through a pipe analogy, comparing a pipe that is smooth and another pipe that is choked, it's easy to visualize that the pipe that is smooth would have a faster flow of water as compared to the choked pipe. So if the water is flowing, you find that the choked pipe will be a slower flow. Electricity behaves similarly as it flows in a high resistance path, it will result in a slower or smaller electrical current in that path. The SI unit of resistance is ohms and is denoted by this symbol. All parts of the circuit like light bulb or heater has its own resistance. Sometimes instead of drawing a device such as a heater, motor or loudspeaker, we represent them using a generic component such as a resistor like this and is represented by this circuit symbol. Even parts such as battery and connecting wires have resistance. Looking over here, you can see that the wire resistance can be tiny a lot and you can increase it and the light bulb will be, even though the light bulb didn't change, the current will be smaller. Or if you change the battery resistance, again the same effect. However, at this stage, we assume that the batteries and the contenting wires are all ideal and have zero resistance. The reason is that we do not want additional complication to distract us from understanding the fundamentals of electricity. The resistance of circuit components don't usually change even if you connect to a different battery. Similarly, a choke pipe is still as choked as no matter where you connect with. So resistance is usually an inherent property of the component unless it's designed specially not to do that. What are some of factors that would determine the resistance of a component? The resistor wire is affected by the following factors as described by the formula. R equals to rho L over A, where R is the resistor wire. Rho is the resistivity of the wire material. L is the length of the wire and A is the cross-sectional area of the wire. Using the obstructiveness of a water pipe analogy, we can see how each factor affects the resistance of the wire. So this is the formula. As you can see, uh, the DRGs are different factors. You can manipulate this value. As you increase this value, the resistance of the wire will be larger. Or if you increase the length, the length and or if you increase the area and decrease the area and so on. Looking at the formula, since L is the numerator part of the formula, resistance and length are linearly related. The longer the wire, the larger the resistance and vice versa. A simple way to remember this is to imagine the choke pipe a longer choke pipe means stacking additional pipes behind and they present more obstruction as the, to the water flow. Thus, a longer length of wire simply presents more obstruction to the electric flow, current flowing. One practical implication is that though we assume that connecting wires has zero resistance, but if the wires are sufficiently long, they will have significant resistance and will have to be taken into account when we design electrical circuits. 
For cross-sectional area of wire, if you notice, A is the denominator part of the formula. It means that R and A are, is inversely related. So when A is smaller, R becomes bigger. Or when A is bigger, R will become smaller. A common misconception is when A is bigger, bigger R is also bigger. This stems from the students having thinking that bigger cross-sectional path has more obstructions. However, think of having a larger cross-sectional area pipe means that there are more or wider pathway for the water to flow through. So overall, there is more water flowing through and overall resistance of the combined these three pipes is actually lowered. So you can imagine the opposite too. Comparing a single lane road and a three lane road, which road do you think you expect to have a smoother traffic? Think about it. Thus, you can come to a conclusion that a larger A allows more current to flow through, which means that the wire is of a lower resistance. Resistivity of the wire depends on the material that the wire is made of. For example, though copper and lead are both metal, their resistivity is different as they have different degree of obstruction to of the electrical current. Okay, these are some values. So a copper and a lead wire of, can be of same length and same cross-sectional cross area can have different resistance as the resistivity of the material of the wires are different. The equivalent energy would be though two pipes have the same length and the same cross-sectional area, the interior of the pipe friction can be different as they are made of different pipe materials. The one that has a rougher interior will present a greater resistance to the current flow. Let's use a simple example. Calculate the resistance of the length of copper wire if it has the following properties. Okay, pause the video and try to work out using the formula of R equals to rho L over A. Do you get the answer? If you didn't get an answer, notice that the radius given is in centimeters. So you have to correct, you have to convert centimeter into meters first and then calculate the cross sectional area in meter square. And in this case, we are assuming there is a circle, so it's pi r square. Next question, if a lead wire of the same radius has the same resistance as the previous copper wire, what will be the length of this lead wire? given that the resistivity of lead is this value. The answer to this is the length of lead wire is about 0.77 meters. Though the resistance and the cross-sectional area of both the wires are the same, the length of this lead wire is much shorter than the copper wire as the resistivity of lead is much higher than the copper. Another factor that affects the resistance of wire is temperature. A change in temperature of the wire can change the resistance of the wire even though the length, cross-sectional area and the material of the wire did not change. And how do you visualize this? When the temperature of wire is increased, the atoms of the wire vibrate more vigorously. So, and, but how would this affect the electrical charges that are trying to move through the wire? So this is a wire that is obviously hot and this is a wire that is of a lower temperature. Imagine that you are trying to move through a room for people. Do you think that you, it's easier to move through when the people are highly energetic, which is hot, or they are not very active, which is cold? And there you have your answer. Thus, when a wire has a higher temperature, electrical charges find it harder to move through the wire. Thus, the resistance of wire is increased. And the opposite also holds true. When you lower the temperature of the wire, the resistance of the wire also goes down. This is also why one of the conditions for some materials to be superconductors is to lower its temperature below its critical temperature when its resistance suddenly becomes zero. Okay, this is some acknowledgement. That's the end of today's session. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteacherswordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.